Hey guys, Stealth here and welcome back. It's episode 6 of the French Campaign, which started in 1890 and we're now in October 1898. Several years have passed. I have really messed up Germany and Germany continues to be blockaded as my power projection is more than Germany's. I also have my French fleet over here in the North Sea. It's not as big as it used to be when I kicked the German fleet in Danzig. Uh, I'm sorry, I think it was Palau actually. The Germans still have 12 ships. That's it. I have also been culling some of the Italian ships. You know that problem that they had with their ports being overcrowded? Well, let's say that I fixed that for them. Um, they don't have that many ships left. They have 18 heavy cruisers, 24 lights, 55 torpedo boats, and of course they're... How should I put this? These are like Schrodinger's battleships. They exist, and they don't exist. Because they are, you can see them in the harbors, you can see them as fleet strength, but they're not actually listed as ships there, which I have already submitted as a bug report. One thing that I was waiting for in this campaign is for my shipyard to grow. That's now complete. I'm going to continue with that project for another 2,000 tons. And as my shipyard is being expanded, I can get a new ship design. I can get my first dreadnought. In fact, it's not my first dreadnought only, it's the world's first dreadnought. I have invested quite a bit in tech, and that is resulting in this ship. Previously, I had ships, I think the biggest was the Carnot, or the Diderot, Diderot at uh, almost 15,500 tons. This ship is 4,000 tons heavier. That's a serious margin. And more important, I can mount a lot more guns. Because whereas previously I could, I think, mount... What's the Didero armed with? Yeah, four 11-inch guns. I can now put side guns, for example, 11 inches there, there, and I still have room for bow and stern turrets. So this ship is most likely, single-handedly, going to cause all sorts of devastation for the other empires. It's also going to be heavily protected, of course. Double bottom, reinforced bulkheads, anti-flood 2, which I've already researched, Citadel and a stereoscopic 2 rangefinder. I don't want to get too close with the ship to the enemy. Let's go for a better steam engine. And as for guns, I can add the biggest guns, which are 13s. These are center lines. I can have one on the bow, not quite one on the stern, because the secondary tower is a bit too big there. Rear tower. Um, is this really worth it? You just get a thousand meters more tower spotting, which also means that you're more likely to spot the enemy, so I can use more longer range accuracy. Yeah, it's probably worth it. Let's see if I can make side mount guns work. Considering that the enemy has few battleships left and generally a lot more cruisers, I'm thinking side mounted 10 inches. Oh, they're still Mark 1. Okay, side mounted 11 inches. Dual barrel or single barrel? The accuracy is negligible. I'm looking at 5,000 meter range. It's 2.1%, 1.9%. So if I were to put the... Oh shit, these are center liners. Uh, side guns, 11 inch dual barrel here. Not there. Oh, I can only have two. Right, technology is keeping me from adding more guns. In that case, I'm going to add them here. I'm going to add some secondary guns onto this slot here. Because 8-inch guns are not to be underestimated. And then, since they are considered a separate turret anyway, I'm going to give them a double barrel 13-inch gun on the bow. If it's not going to be too heavy, that is. Let's push the secondary tower all the way to the back. Uh, balancing this thing out is going to be pretty tricky. Pretty tricky indeed. Can we add another funnel? No. That's the tall funnel too. They really only have one funnel slot. Engine efficiency is going to be hurting here. Um, this gun's probably too big. It's very hard to balance this thing out. Now, this does mean that you can essentially disregard what I was saying before about the ship having more firepower than its counterpart. Because it pretty much won't. It won't have more firepower. 
it's not like I can make all these guns work at the same time. I mean, maybe six barrels. That's probably the extent of it. Really want this to fit. There. Bit heavy on the aft. Oh, that's 12 inch Mark 1. 11 inch 2. That's more like it. I can also upgrade the 8 inch guns to effectively be bigger than they normally would be. And of course, we're going to go with the increased barrel length. Because so far, the increased barrel length has served me extremely well. I really, really like having that. Go for two inch turret, uh, sorry, two inch uh, superstructure armor, 14 inch belt armor, which now gets a plus 78% armor quality. A bit more aft belt, no, actually a bit less aft belt, because the aft belt's not too heavy. What I do not have anymore are casemate guns. So all the firepower is going to have to come out of these turrets. Let's make sure that they rotate quickly to their target at 4.78 degrees per second for the 11 inchers. The 9-incher is faster at 5.82, this is 4.39, and this is 4.78. So yeah, all turrets should be capable of rotating fairly swiftly. Is it possible to put another 8.9-incher up here? No, sadly not. But I can put one over there. Um, roll is not really that bad. I don't quite like... Could this work? Hold on, I'm just... <laughs> oh, you thought the AI designed stupid ships. No, this is worse, potentially. Um, yeah. I thought this was going to balance the ship out. Sadly, it does not. to switch this to an 8. Now that just gives me a ginormous four-weight offset. Okay, main guns. This is the 11 inch. If I put an 11 inch on the stern, it's probably gonna... Yeah, it's gonna mess up the weight distribution there. 10 inch. There. That's more like it. 0.8. I like this. Okay, um, what I'm going to be probably sorely missing are my 6 inch guns. If I can put those anywhere, I would love to do that. Have barbettes been invented yet? No, they have not. Or they don't fit on this ship. Casemate guns. Oh! Guns, guns, guns. Yes, please. Okay, let's get these all to 20% length. And I could increase the diameter of these 10-inch guns. Just to make them almost 11-inch guns. I can do the same thing with the 11 inch guns to make them almost 12 inches, which is still the Mark 1. So that's the side mount 11 inch guns. Let's go with uh, plus 0.9. So 11.9 inch guns. Pretty potent ship, this. At least that's my expectation of it. Let's go to 16 inch gun armor. Uh, this is 15 inch, this is 12 inch. Giving me a lot of room for further improvement. I now have the ability to change shell type from semi to standard. Semi armor piercing shells are really not going to cut it. It's not good enough. Go to standard. That's more like it. Nose fuse. I can go for soft capped HE shells. And considering the fairly soft threats that I'm going up against, I think that's pretty good. Get the white powder and that. Let's get a standard ratio, standard ratio, and secondaries. Although these are really the only secondaries that I have. The oh, sorry, these and the casemates, the three inchers. And yeah, I think that should be it. I know that I forwent uh, or have uh, decided not to use this. Actually, could I put secondaries on there? I can. But I would actually much rather have bigger guns, like another 10-incher, rather than the ability to put an additional 3-inchers there. Uh, so main guns, 10-incher, 
there. And fix that thing, 20% there, plus one there. There we go. Let's increase the bow belt. Balance the ship out. There we go. And uh, 15 inch here. Inner deck. I don't know, two inch. Superstructure, four inch. Jesus. Yeah, this is uh, fine. Oh, hydraulic steering. This is fine. Dreadnought comes from the term fears nothing or dread nothing. That's, I think, very apt for this ship. Because this is going to be extremely difficult to sink for the enemy. Even if they hit me with a torpedo, I'm still going to be able to negate about 20% of damage and flooding chance. And my turning circle is probably not going to be pretty. 543. So that is definitely a consideration. But sooner rather than later, I'll probably be able to research hydroacoustic stations. And that will allow me to put even more warnings on this ship and even more survivability. Also, if I get the tech to install additional side mount guns there, then I will definitely do that. So let's get a couple of these things out. It's going to take me a while because at the moment, I think, yeah, how long? 16 months. That's not even that bad. 15 months for the Diderot. They're about 2 million more expensive, but that's it. Okay, give me four of these. And I want to design one specific uh, cruiser, oh, sorry, yeah, cruiser killer. So that's going to be the Dreadnought again. It can be fairly small, but it has to be faster. We're going to make the beam sleeker to make it faster again. And reduce the draft. Put the smaller secondary tower in. Put the advanced main tower in, he said enthusiastically, and that didn't fit. Uh, maximum bulkheads, yes. Can we go 25 knots? Yes. Can we go... Holy crap. Can we go 30 knots? You can? Christ, this is a fast red knot. Holy shit. Okay. The reason why I'm trying to build a ship like this is so that I have a counter to the Italians. Because the Italians have these really, well, fairly numerous cruisers. And if I just add a couple of 10-inch guns all around, or uh, upgunned... Actually, upgunned 8-inchers might be enough. Like here, here, I can even put them here. Let's throw a funnel in before I forget that. Engine efficiency is going to be horrendous because I don't have better boilers yet. Main guns. Mm, I think 10 inches is enough to deal with all the cruisers. There, there. Hold on. Side mounted 10 inches here. Yep. Why not? I'm going to have to pull them a little bit closer to the center line. No, oh, here. 2%. Perfect. So, what can we provide? We can provide a lot of firepower to a broadside. Much more than the previous Dreadnought design. Because with this, I have the 8 inches here, which I'm going to upgun. So, that's going to be... Uh, 8.9s and 10.9s, 20% barrel length, 20% barrel length. Superstructure armor. Uh, oh crap, it's going to be too heavy now. Okay. 28 knots. No. 26 knots. Yes. Also pushes the engine efficiency up a little. Improve the reload, improve the turret rotation speed. It's still too heavy. Um, standard ratio. Standard ratio, standard shells, soft cap edge shells. Yes, yes. Uh, we're fighting cruisers, essentially, mostly. 11 inch belt. Four, four, three. Just trying to balance ship out. Superstructure is more important when you're dealing with cruisers. Interior deck armor, give me a 17 inch conning tower. And yeah, I think that's my ship. The Courbet. Cruiser killer class. I'm going to have two of those and I'm going to field them in the Mediterranean. 
me do these. This is going to really put some pressure on my budget, but I essentially have what I wanted, Dreadnoughts. So I can push the finances for tech down a bit and wait for, well, either more ships to be completed um, or for my economy to get a bit more stabilized. I'm still growing by 4%, but it's not as much as it used to be. Look at the Brits, though. 13 billion GDP, but they're shrinking quite a bit. They're building 32 new ships. That must be hurting. And the Germans are still stuck at their 1.1 billion. The Germans apparently also don't really have a lot of faith in their leader anymore. Alfred von Torpitz is removed and replaced by Alexander von Montz. Okay. Whoa! Torpedo boat ambush. Danton and Invincible. Both Carnot-class battleships going up against a slew of the Italian torpedo boats. Now, after episode 5, so the previous episode, I sent uh, a small essay to the developers saying that I think the AI needs to be improved and suggested how they can improve them. I really hope that they're going to take that to heart. Of course, you won't see that implemented in this episode yet. But what I really want to see is swarm attacks of torpedo boats. If they get the drop on my battleships like this and they're able to attack in one large blob then my battleship will take damage. And with a torpedo boat, you don't even need to sink the target to make the enemy hurt. Because fixing up ships, and especially battleships, is a really expensive enterprise. So even hurting a couple of battleships and putting them out of commission for three, four, five months, and thereby putting the enemy onto a repair budget for three, four, five months is expensive as hell. So that would already make it worth it for the Italians in this case to start dealing damage to my battleships. Because again, you don't need to kill, you just need to do enough damage. But this is not the way to do it. This is a torpedo boat, not a fucking gunboat. Yes, it has seven three-inch guns, but the torpedo launcher I feel should be the main weapon and I wrote as much to the developers. The torpedo boats or rather, um, my logic was a ship that has a torpedo and maybe finds that their main gun is completely ineffective, like now. I mean, yeah, they can pen my superstructure, but that's it. If a ship, let's say the logic of a ship, finds that it is ineffective against the target that it's going up against with its guns, then push up into range. Go into torpedo range. These guys had the numbers, but not like this. This way, they don't have the numbers. This way, they're just dropping one by one without doing much of anything. And with torpedo boats, even more so than with normal ships, you're going to see these ridiculously skewed numbers. Is I have done 20,000 points of damage. They've done five. 21,000. This is... A 4,000 times markup. I'm not making these numbers up. 5,000 times markup. It's just crazy. Of course, victory points for killing torpedo boats are not that substantial. But something like this really could be prevented. You give me all the torpedo boats, I'm probably going to be able to land at least two torpedoes on a battleship. Of course, whether those are duds or not, I don't know. That is something that is up to RNG. The Italian has lost another 5 torpedo boats in that attack. 10 torpedo boats could have been a problem. Now, what else is happening in the world? Because there were a few more conflicts. Let's see. We have a convoy. A battleship, once again, against a couple of... Trans oh, sorry, against a couple of uh, cruisers. Of course, the Italians are going to use nothing but cruisers. And it just becomes... Well, war of attrition is not the right term... It's more of a slog, I think. Because I'm just taking down one cruiser after another, defending my convoys with a battleship. It's just, these guys don't stand a chance. And I'm sorry, but they <laughs> these battles don't make for very interesting uh, content either. The French, sorry, my French fleet is in contact with something else, but I can't quite see what that is. Invade. Repair this priority. There we go. 
it's a German group, but I'm not exactly sure what. They're sending one torpedo boat out there, one torpedo boat out there. Um, I can't really blame them because they've got 12 ships left. No battleships. Is that true? That's false. Oh, more bugs. The Germans have two battleships in Danzig, but they're not registering. So I suspect that we're going to hear... Oh, another two there. Another one there. Oh, no. And another one there. And... Yeah. This is going to get progressively worse. A lot worse. Because the AI does not know how to use their ships. They build battleships, but the battleships somehow, due to a bug, don't get registered and are not used. Yeah, if this persists, then I'm probably going to have to end this campaign early. And I hate doing that, but at this point, I'm just bashing cruisers into submission. I don't think that there's too much of a point. This is something that caught me a little by surprise. The Italian Empire has sent us a telegraph which clearly threatens us for war? Accusing us for the latest warm incidents in our common borders. You mean the sinking of 20 to 25 cruisers? And about two dozen transports? Oh, sorry, torpedo boats? How should we respond? Our patience is over. We must reply that we will solve our problems in the war field. Although it's cowardice from our sides, we must comply. You're right. We cannot fight against the Italian Empire at this point. Fuck that. I'm not paying them 23 million because I'm winning. No, 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 no. Uh, we're at war. And all of a sudden, now the game goes, Ah, you're at war. Good. So now I can start actually scoring victory points against the Italians. The Italians, which currently only have 74 ships left. The Germans have been reduced to 10. The British to 55 which is actually not that bad. And of course, the Germans will continue to build new ships. Just five, though, with their, well, I was going to say withering economy, but it's not that bad. Their economy, in wartime, is growing faster than mine, which is also in wartime, of course. Now, let's have a look. A couple of convoys here. Let's see if I actually get the victory points for sinking these two heavies and one light. Because so far... I have received, I think, no victory points for it. And this too is something that I made mention to in a bug report saying, hey guys, this is not right. It's not likely that I'm having a <laughs> Cold War gone hot, if you will, um, while we're still officially not at war with these people. Don't know how, don't know why, but apparently the Italians and the French, my empire, we can fight each other without any actual consequences. Let's see, here's our first volunteer. Turn to port, slow down to full. And let's see if these guys are actually going to yield me... Eh, maybe... Just shy of a thousand victory points. After eliminating them, focus on the heavy cruiser first. Carano is on fire, but otherwise fine. This is one of the newer, uh, not newest, newer class of battle ships, which are geared towards anti-cruiser warfare. So they got the double nine-incher and four six-inchers. And so far, they have already done a lot of work for me, and I really appreciate the way that these ships have held up against enemy cruisers. Their AP shells, interestingly, only get partial pens. So with these ships, I might need to do something to make them more deadly. At least more capable of penning the enemy. But give them a little bit of time to work. And you get fairly spectacular results. Such as this. Overpen, overpen, overpen. And flooding. I really appreciate that with the beta 106 patch. You now have the ability to deal a lot more damage through the bow of an enemy ship. There you go again. Full pen. Because this used to be a bit of a problem. Uh, these... 900 point damage hits, by the way, are my 6 inch armor piercing, which are going to town against the Vittorio Emanuele. And soon there won't be a light cruiser left. Now I'm going to do this battle off camera because it's it's just the so many -th cruiser battle, if you will, that I just care about the results, not so much the battle. With another crippling salvo from Carnot, the last of the cruisers went down giving me far more victory points than I'd actually expected. And the Italians got one point for their trouble. So, let's see if those are properly attributed. Because this is something that sometimes goes wrong in one of these patches. Uh, yep, it's going right. I, for one, don't know when this war is going to end. 
I don't know how to make peace. Uh, not that I want to or don't want to, I'm just not sure how to do it. Because, of course, having my ships still blockade... Oh, sorry, no, they're not blockading anymore. Um, having my ships still in such close proximity to the Germans is not really helping peace treaties. But I was hoping that having a fleet here was either going to provoke their ships into coming out to play, or in um, having these ships just such blockaded and blockading their economy that they were going to sue for peace. But neither party is happening. I think, by the way, looking at the cruiser tally here, that something else is going horribly wrong with this version of the game. Because the cruisers, or the, the Germans, have two heavy cruisers, according to this overview. But I'm seeing seven heavy cruisers here. I'm seeing two battleships and one heavy cruiser there. That's eight heavy cruisers. It's already more than the two listed. I'm seeing another three there, one there. Let's see if they got anything down for repair. Oh, it's a fleet. I thought they captured Denmark. Uh, yeah, six more heavy cruisers, eight more heavy cruisers. The German fleet is not nearly as weak as they make it out to be. This is another bug. And this is something that I was kind of expecting. I mean, there will be bugs. There will be things that don't quite work out. Now, it looks like player three is entering the war. The Austro-Hungarian Empire is threatening us that they will declare war on us if we do not show a sign of reducing the tension against their country. They ask from us to invest a portion of our naval funds on their own industry. Yeah, right. That's not going to happen. That is not going to happen. I can give them an amount. I can give them a lot. 47 million? Or I can say, nah, it's not happening. And it's going to worsen relationships with Austria-Hungary. Um, yep, there goes the war. <laughs> Fine. Fine. Okay, be like that. Um, I just had another big victory against the Italians, giving me 5,500 victory points versus 8. I don't know about you guys, but if this is what I am faced with, if this, if, if I was Italy and I saw that the enemy had, uh, let's see, 10, 100, 5, 6, 7, 700 times the points I did, I would probably reconsider the war. Probably. Because this is not some small difference. This is a huge markup. And they're fighting a powerhouse. I don't mean strictly myself, but my economy is growing, my shipyards are growing, my naval tech is growing. Next month I'm going to have even better uh, high nickel steel, which is going to give me less armor weight. I'm looking at uh, less ship construction time. The other one I'm researching is better uh, onboard caissons, which is going to allow my watertight ships or my, my ships to be uh, faster in repairing from flooding. I don't see them winning this one. Not really. But then again, it's the AI. It doesn't really see reason. That's it for this episode. Um, next episode, if there is one, because I'm not exactly sure, but we'll just see how many more bugs we can uncover so I can help the devs fix those. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you soon for the next one.